Hey everyone, welcome again to the Engineering Toolbox where we solve real world engineering problems with common or maybe not so common tools. So in the last video we talked about um, creating tables, the basics, how they work, what features they have, that type of thing. Um, pretty basic stuff, but we're going to um, continue to ramp things up here and uh, learn how we can leverage these um, to, again, going back to solving those real world engineering problems. So. One of my favorite things to use tables for is storage of data. And the great thing about tables is their ability to um, relate data to other, either other places in Excel or um, to the tool that we're gonna be learning about today with pivot tables. Pivot tables are great for breaking down data um, data that's well stratified, um, layered data, that type of thing. You'll kind of see how we can use those um, and kind of what I'm talking about in a little bit here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on to the next topic or category, I should say. And let's say next I'm going to be talking about Microsoft Access. So um, Maybe we'll cover some basics and probably that and blah, blah, blah. Access, again, this is just for example. Access, basics, um, let's see what else. Uh, well, one of the things that I created an access database for was a um, manufacturing tool database. And we'll say that's priority two. Okay, so this is a pretty basic little list. Um, again, the example is that these are the things that I'm going to be going through in, in my YouTube videos. So what we can do with this is relate this or use this data and link it to a pivot table or create a pivot table with this data, I, sh I guess would be a better way of putting it. So we actually don't even have to select the entire table. If this weren't a table, we would have to specify the exact range that uh, that the pivot table would be using. And that's really nice. Um, a really nice thing about tables is that uh, the pivot table can then know or is then linked to this table. So if this table grows, the pivot table still knows it's linked to the table or the, the yeah, our original table too many tables in this explanation here so hopefully you guys are following this but um, we'll just dive in and hopefully we figure it out okay so I'm gonna create a pivot table and you notice that it already detects this table so let's say all right we want to create it on a new worksheet um, hit OK it loads a new worksheet there for us and pivot tables if you're not familiar with them again I'm not going to go into the details of how to use them I'll provide links to other resources on how to use them it's pretty well documented, but um, again, I just want to kind of glance over this and um, at least provide some of the basics. All right, so in our rows, maybe we want to drop in categories. So you can kind of see, so far we have our categories, Excel and Access with different subtopics, or I guess topics in this case, with some different uh, information or other values out here. Um, one of the things I added was video length just to show um, some other functionality of pivot tables. And I'll go into pivot tables more in some other videos, but right now I just want to show why it's important to um, use tables for storing the data that pivot tables um, use. So as you can see, uh, pivot tables, I'm not going to go into too much depth because there's plenty of other videos out there. But as you can see, um, pivot tables, group data, stratified data into um, their categories or their data values. So we have multiple Excel and Access values, but pivot tables group those together. Um, and we can add uh, let's our topics under those categories, and Excel drops those in there. And maybe we want to add video length over here. So this will show us that um, for our Access category um, we have our two data points or our two topics under that access category um, with values of 7 and 10 for a total 
or seven and three for a total of 10. So that's really quick overview of kind of what pivot tables do. Okay, so going back, why is it important that we store this in a table? Well, I'll show you. So if I'm going through and I'm adding, let's just put in a value called test as a, another category in my data set, um, test again and 500, okay, 5,000. Well, tables make it very nice to add data to the data that the pivot table is using. So when we refresh this, it adds it there. The problem with not using tables is, let's say this was, we'll just convert this to a regular range. So, well, this might even be broken now. Um, change data source, yeah, so okay, so let's say we just make that our data sources. It's no longer a table, even though it looks like a table. I can't add, I, I hit tab, it doesn't add anything. It's just regular data. And this is what a lot of people do. They'll just set up their uh, data table and they'll just go along typing, um, but it doesn't have the structure and features that a table does. So if I add another value here, the pivot table is pulling from a set range, which is right here. So if I go back to this and refresh, it doesn't do anything because, again, if I go to change data source, it's set to this range. And that's why um, I think it's basically a necessity, uh, especially if you know you're gonna be adding data to a data set, to uh, make sure to put it in a table so that this range changes uh, dynamically with the table and it's always linked back to that, that uh, that table here. So again, I'll convert this back to a table. It's set back to a table. We go into our uh, pivot table. We can change that data source again, reselect, and it's changed to table two now because it's the second table we've created. So it's linked to table two. It knows that uh, this table is essentially an object within Excel. And, not essentially what it is, it actually is considered an object um, in Excel. And when I relink that, it uh, shows the test two data. And I can go back and add just as for redundancy to prove the point, we'll go back and uh, add one more data point. And now that it's a table again, um, refresh that and it shows. Hopefully that gives you guys a good idea why uh, using tables um, for storing data for pivot tables is uh, very helpful in Excel. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be talking probably more about some real world examples, um, of things that I've used tables for in my career um, that have helped me to manage projects um, and then some other topics later on as well. So look forward to seeing you guys there.